shocking experience now on four, and a striking short film for Peter Greenaway called Lightning, an Act of God. nice on the Saturday and a storm developed in the evening and um, it must have woken us because we were rather restless in, at night and then all of a sudden there was an outbreak of thunder and uh, a terrific explosion. umbrella was held in two hands. My left hand was on the plastic part of the handle and my right hand was on the metal part of the handle. Suddenly there was a brilliant flash of light and at the same time a very loud crash of thunder. Got the boys in the sea and having a whale of a time and for some reason which I don't really know I just looked inland and looked well inland and saw very dark clouds coming over and started shouting instructions to the Cubs and the leaders, get back in the groups, get the gear together, and we'd better head back to our camp. Uh, unfortunately, as we were doing this, a tremendous lightning bolt came and hit the beach. In September 1970, a woman wheeling her daughter in a metal frame pushchair on the promenade at South End was struck by lightning in a sudden storm and killed. The child was untouched, but the untended pushchair ran over the edge of the promenade into the sea, and the baby was drowned. My wife had been blown out of bed uh, and she was on the mat. It was a sheepskin rug, actually. This hand, which fortunately was gloved, f was flung away sideways like that, like a signpost. That surprised me enormously and it worried me somewhat because I couldn't move my fingers at all. So I looked back at the umbrella to see what had happened and when I looked, just where the spokes clip up, there was a brilliant blue ball of static electricity. There was a mirror near to the point of impact and uh, this mirror was absolutely black. A little girl who had just walked on the breakwater seconds, you know, I, I should think during the second light got hit and her little sister was also next to her and she got badly, badly burnt. It wasn't until three days later when I started to get a sensation of pins and needles down my left side that I thought something was wrong. That got stronger and stronger for the next week and I ended up collapsing, apparently, from sort of delayed shock. In June 1971, a woman standing on the roof of the Spectator's Lounge at Luton Airport was struck by lightning and was superficially burnt in ten places that corresponded to the contact of metal on her body. The pieces of metal responsible were her earrings, a St. Christopher medal, a brassier clip, a wristwatch strap, a wedding ring, two suspender belt hooks and a sixpenny piece she kept for luck fixed in the inside heel of her left shoe. The first person I was taken to see was my general practitioner and he, I think, was very honest. He said it looked as though I'd been struck by lightning and he was afraid he didn't know what to do because they didn't teach them that sort of thing at medical school. People say that lightning, you know, it's a chance in a million. But when you're actually there, 100 yards away from being the chance in a million, uh, that's pretty scary. It wasn't an experience like the road to Damascus for me, but I think it has made me prepared. I think when you're young, you feel that you're almost immortal, and it did sort of bring home the fact that you would die sometime. Everybody laughs when you tell them. They think it's a huge joke, but we didn't. There are three common ways lightning strike can enter the human body. Firstly, uh, there can be a direct strike onto the head. Secondly, process which is often referred to as a side flash. Electricity can flow more easily down the body of a wet person than down the trunk of a tree. Uh, well, there is a third form, and this is referred to as the step voltage effect. The lightning hits the earth, 
but then travels up one leg and down the other leg of the subject. Half past eleven in the morning. Half past three in the afternoon. Half past three. Three thirty. Ten past four in the afternoon. Four thirty in the afternoon. Ten minutes to seven in the evening. Seven o'clock in the evening. Nine thirty at night. Ten to twelve at night. I went into our small mess tent. It had electric light in it. And I wanted to look at my maps before going out to visit the firing batteries who were occupying gun positions during that night. I don't remember any thunder at the time. There was showers of rain no more. I was pretty wet. And while standing in the tent, next thing I knew was I was lying on the ground. The lightning was right overhead, really, but still didn't think about doing anything uh, with the umbrella, that it might be dangerous. We walked up to the green, and I was standing beside the green with uh, the lady who was in my team. We both had our umbrellas up still. And at this point, we felt an electric shock just go down the umbrella and down our arms. My husband was expecting an electrician friend to come and do some work in the house. We'd had a complete power failure because of the storm. He said, do you mind just phoning this man and telling him there's no point in coming because we haven't any light in the house. So I picked up the phone, but I think I was just dialing, when there was this just almighty thud. The sky got very dark, and it was obviously going to rain very hard. So I gathered up all my equipment, my easel, my painting, my metal chair, and I started hearing across the green towards home, which is about 200 yards away, I suppose. And as I got to the edge of the green, I was uh, suddenly very, very conscious of uh, a chopper being landed into my left shoulder and the uh, ground disappearing from me, and I was enveloped in uh, this area of light. On September the 21st, 1972, lightning struck a horse chestnut tree at Hatfield Heath in Essex. Three minutes later, two miles away, it struck a boy playing conkers in a bus shelter at Matching. I tried to shout for help. My mouth wouldn't sort of give forth. My arms and legs seemed to be paralysed. And I lay there. I was standing just like this with the umbrella straight up. It came down, straight down there, right up there. And that was it. I was holding the telephone. With my other hand, I was rocking my granddaughter's pram. And apparently when the lightning struck, there were flashes of blue leaping off the pram handle. And my children told me from my watch and my bracelets, I felt as if I had actually jumped off the ground. I was rather conscious of the ground disappearing from beneath me. I presume I must have should have been shot into the air to some extent. In August 1973, lightning struck a paint factory at Middlesbrough, bringing down a fat of sulfuric acid. The acid fell into a yard spattering gloss paint test samples that had been weathering there for 15 years. The one sample to escape damage was a colour identified on the paint manufacturer's colour chart as electric blue. Below, um, the electric light cable must have been my berry with my head underneath it. And there was a small hole, not bigger than really a couple of matchsticks. Uh, and also through the berry into the top of my head, somewhere around here, there was a very small hole, uh, burn hole. And again, the, the same in the soles of my heels. There is a rule that if there is a thunderstorm around, it's quite in order to, to stop play and take shelter. Quite where one takes shelter, I don't know, because I don't think it's too safe to stand under trees. I didn't have to go to bed or anything or go to a doctor. My ear was very bright red for uh, perhaps another 24 hours. My arm was superficially burnt right the way down, and my leg was superficially burnt. Uh, red sort of blobbish burns all the way down. I had very vivid flash burns down my chest and onto my thighs. They went away after about three or four days, but while they were there, they were really something quite wonderful to look at. After the uh, event, I um, became a, a little bit more religious than I am. I'm not basically a very religious person, uh, but I tended not to 
act religiously, but to think more religiously for a while. My mother seemed to have this idea that if, I'd have wound, if you wind an elastic band around the point of an umbrella, that is supposed to stop you from being struck by lightning. My colleagues at work presented me with this award, which has the inscription on it, 7770. Seven, I don't know what significance there is in the numbers, but I'm not really superstitious. Familiar lightning superstitions suggest that when lightning is present, it's advisable to turn mirrors to the wall, hide knives, cover the milk, stay away from trees, keep scissors closed, empty standing water, move away from the fireplace, pull out all electric plugs, and carefully protect your eldest child. 18th of April. April the 25th. Late May. June the... 24th July. The 4th of July. July 23rd. The 6th of August. I was a party leader of a group of scouts in the Lofoten Islands. We ascended a mountain by the name of Hermanstall in the South Lofoten group and were caught in a heavy thunderstorm. We found a slab or bowl that balanced on another two flakes, which made rather like a, a tunnel. Um, open at both ends, slightly wider at one end than the other. And I was actually on the outside of the group when we settled down for the night. All of a sudden there was a very, very loud bang. The whole party was inflicted by burning sensations which uh, appeared to come from where the body was in contact with the rock. I must have gone completely rigid, straightened out like a ramrod, and I hit my head on the rock I was leaning against. And this knocked me out, and Tony Williams realised this when he came to and gave me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. I had a bump on the back of my head um, and a mark on the back of my neck where the lightning had either entered or ex exited from my body. A Harper Authority clerk who had seen his workmate killed on the quayside at Falmouth when lightning had struck his cap badge never failed to take his own cap badge off if there was a storm about. The clerk was seen on such an occasion by his superior and was reprimanded for improper dress. A reprimand that, coupled with a charge of negligence conducive to arson, led to the clerk's dismissal. There used to be a very large tree on this spot here. And during this heavy deluge, with my umbrella, I rushed under this tree, which has now been dug up, and heard the... Uh, tremendous peal of thunder and a few seconds later I was struck by uh, by lightning. My initial impression was of someone who was dead. He was unconscious, he looked shocked, he was breathing fortunately but he had no pulses uh, visible or palpable in his arms or his legs which we showed later was due to a spasm of arteries in his arms and his legs. We took him into casualty, and there I did a fuller examination uh, after we cut his clothes off. And this is what we found. He had been holding an umbrella in his right hand. And as you can see, he's got a superficial burn on his right forearm. The charge had passed down his chest. You can see the burn mark of a vest that he was wearing. A little lower down, a much deeper burn, where probably his belt was situated. And one can visualize the charge dividing at around about his umbilical region and coming down both his legs, with the main bulk of the charge going down into his left leg. The charge, for some unknown reason, came through the top of his shoe, and as you can see, it blew off the top of the shoe. But in his vest pocket, he had a 10 shilling note, and as you can see, the charge went down part of the metal strip and melted it. An elderly man and his son, taking a stroll arm in arm one night outside a hotel in the Transvaal, received a shock as they were walking over an outcrop of ironstone that had conducted a charge when struck by lightning some considerable distance away. Knocked down and locked in one another's embrace, they rolled about on the ground, unable to disentangle themselves. They were finally separated by other hotel guests, who believed them to be drunk and disorderly. We decided to carry on walking through the woods. 
Then all of a sudden it came over very dark and started to rain. I um, looked around for a tree, saw a tree and, and started to run with it, um, pulling a mark along with me. He only had a shirt sleeve on, so he was going to get fairly wet, you know. There was suddenly a big flash and fork lightning struck a tree which was nearby to my brother. To me it looked like it bounced off and hit them. They in turn just killed over and fell to the ground. At first I did not realise that uh, they'd been struck by the light and I thought they were play acting. But after a few minutes I realised something was wrong and I rushed across the road and found them both laying down on the floor. Uh, the little boy was stone stone dead I would think straight away I tried to uh, revive him but no luck I turned to my brother who was twitching twisting on the ground the next thing I knew then was um, basically coming around in an ambulance on the way to Oxford asking what had happened to my boy I knew he was with me at the time I knew that I put my arm around him and it was really for um, two or three days afterwards before I think uh, I knew what had actually happened to me. It was a, um, an act of God, one could say. Um, why we should have been chosen in preference to someone else, you know, in the vicinity, no idea. A patient can have burns of any description, singeing of body hair, arborescent burns, which look like ferns. It can be the impression of metal objects on the skin. Wounds can be of any size and description. A patient can have any number of fractures, simple, compound, or multiple. And later, a whole host of miscellaneous injuries, such as blindness, deafness, paralysis, loss of memory. I'm five feet three inches. Five foot three. Five foot six. Five and a half feet. Five foot seven and a half. And five nine and a half. Five foot ten and a half. Five foot eleven. Five foot eleven. Six one. Six feet two. Six two. Six foot two. <laughs> I heard the singing of my ice axe on my back. I looked up to the top of the mountain to see how far I had to go to get out of this. 200 feet, 300 feet. And then, it was at that moment that I saw a wisp of cloud come across the, the summit, a flick or two of, flick or two of snow, and then, um, all hell was let loose. Rather, uh, I mean, we had this oscillation like that and it began to increase in a pitch that I'd never heard before and I wasn't very happy with that. But everything was beginning to sing. Everything, and then... We walked along Bickledon, up Rossett Gill, past Angle Tarn, onto Sprinkling Tarn, some seven miles or so. We had a very nice afternoon there, had a meal, out of the rucksack, and on the way back it was starting, well, it was evening actually, and... Uh, we heard thunder ahead. It began again. This, this same repeated process of this oscillation, the build-up, the volume, the oscillation, the increase in intensity, and then... I felt this stab in the small of my back, rather like if you can have, if there is such a thing as a hundred weight of feathers, that someone can hit you in an area that is three or four inches wide on your back. We went walking along perhaps another mile or so, and then the hail started again. Uh, this time it was so severe we couldn't go any further. I got my back to the hail. I actually put my hands on my wife's shoulders, and we crouched as near the base of the wall uh, as we could get. And then suddenly there was one almighty crack. My experience uh, told me that I must be in an electrical pocket and that I could either go down out of it or go up out of it uh, towards the summit. Now, at that stage, this electricity was crawling all over me. It was in my nose, it was in my ears, it was round my beard, um, in my hair, and of course my hair was standing vertically. The hair on my hands was absolutely rigid. I, I remember thinking, it's strange how you think little thoughts that are of no consequence. I remember recalling that I didn't realize I had so much hair on my fingers. I went sailing through the air, uh, landed on the back on the ground about six yards away and uh, spread eagle like a turtle. My arms and legs were stiff and rigid and my hands and feet were actually above the ground. After a while the current subsided. I could move my head. I turned my head to the right and uh, my wife was also on her bike. Her eyes were open 
wide open. It had turned to rain again. The rain was pouring in her eyes and down her cheeks. Uh, lips blue, face absolutely ashen. She was obviously dead. I do remember that there was some cigarettes in my rucksack. And I thought if only I could get a cigarette, at least I would have a cigarette. A last cigarette. I didn't think of it like that. I don't want to imply I was being heroic. I was anything but a heroic. But uh, there were the cigarettes. Do you know, I couldn't get them out of my rucksack because anything that I did to unfasten the cord on my rucksack, which is only tied as you would tie, untie your shoelace, mm. to pull those strings took an immense amount of willpower. I had to drive myself to pull the strings because even that action was to bring on this intensity of howling. I remember shrugging myself over, eventually managed to swing myself over onto the chest and uh, then with my head pressing down, eventually got to a kneeling position. I was flailing my hands and forearms on the ground to get the light back into them when I remember these, what to me by then are two shadowy figures came on the scene. One of them said, get her away from that bloody wall. So he dra uh, they dragged her nearer to where I lay, about six yards from the wall, and then they got to work on her. One of them gave her mouth to mouth, the other heart massage, thumping on the chest. They were both knelt at the same side of her body. Uh, that went on for some minutes, and then uh, one of them said, well, I think we've got a heartbeat. In August 1977, lightning struck a cottage near East Dereham in Norfolk with no apparent ill effects until the owner, taking a bath, touched a metal tap with his foot and received a severe shock. It was subsequently discovered that the whole plumbing system was electrified and remained that way for 24 hours until the local electricity authority fitted an earthing device. A pair of um, training shoes. Leather shoes with composite soles. Rubber soled sandals. Fell walking boots. Football boots with plastic suits and metal inserts. Full mountain boots. These will have a rubber sole and a steel shank to stiffen that sole. Football boots, nylon studs. I had nothing on my feet. A new pair of uh, Crockett and Jones uh, brogues with very heavy, uh, very heavy Dunlop uh, rubber soles. Just socks. A park ranger in America has been struck by lightning seven times. In 1942, he lost a big toenail. In 1969, two eyebrows. In 1970, his left shoulder was seared. And in 1972 and 1973, his hair was set on fire. In 1976, his ankle was injured. And in 1977, he suffered chest and stomach burns. In my left hand, I was carrying a metal frame chair. But I don't usually uh, carry anything when I were fell walking. It's holding this umbrella. I was not holding anything. Probably a mat board, but that's wood and talc. I had my arm around my son Mark's shoulder. I was holding an umbrella in both hands. Nothing at the time. A man with a record of at least three potential suicide attempts regularly climbed the steep hill at the back of his house at Great Morven every time a storm was forecast to see if he could be struck by lightning. On one such occasion, a milk float whose brakes failed to grip the hill road that was awash with heavy rain, ran out of control, mounted the pavement, and knocked down and fatally injured the potential suicide as he was about to set out to climb the hill. Well, we all arrived here about uh, 11 o'clock, and, and about 11 11 30, we came out onto the pitch like, and it was raining as we came out. And the referee asked the boat captains if... Uh, they didn't mind playing in the conditions, which we didn't. Rain got steadily worse, and then turned from rain to hailstorms. And after about seven or eight minutes, there were some flashes of lightning over over the golf course, over the far distance there. The hailstorm was so big it was hurting the players, so the referee called us off and banned the game. We got to the cricket square, and the hailstorm stopped. Uh, the referee decided to go back on the field. But before we had the chance to turn or anything, you know, the lightning struck. There was a crack of thunder and bang. Quiet for a wild track, please. The general rule of thumb is, is simply to count slowly the interval between seeing the lightning and hearing the thunder. And if you divide that number of seconds by four, then you've got the distance approximately in miles. I went up in the air landed, the ground seemed to come to me on, on my knees and uh, my head was in a terrible state. Uh, I looked round and it was like a battlefield. I was on the floor looking up at people running past me. I couldn't get up myself. I was screaming for help. The one boy, uh, he seemed to be on fire, you know, there was smoke coming from him. And uh, 
we ran to him and there, there was a few of the uh, ship team there. But we were all afraid to touch him because we were afraid of him being alive. I had some marks on my chest that um, I was wanting to say Christopher. The marks were within the area defined by the chain. Uh, the hospital were unable to give me a satisfactory explanation of what exactly they were. Well, I was more shocked than anything else, I think. Um, I was one of those that was taken to hospital. Uh, also, apparently, my heart was beating uh, very erratically at the hospital. And um, they were a little worried at that at first, but, you know, everything's OK now. Later on in the afternoon, I heard that one of the players had been severely injured. The following day, I was told that he was in a very serious condition, which ultimately led to his death. I'm not very religious, but to see that young boy struck down as he was, it did make me wonder whether any religion was true, really. It's just saying frightened of thunderstorms, now. Huh? It's like having a, a fist inside your stomach trying to claw out, like... I don't like it. I wouldn't like to go out there now. I'm trying to stay indoors. A woman at Redcliffe was struck by lightning on her front porch as she was bringing in the milk. It was the first time she had brought the milk in for six years. For her husband, a postman, rising early, always did it. On this occasion, her husband was off work, laid up in bed, having been bitten by a dog called Flash. 